Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Yes! Welcome to Drinking Bros Podcast. Ooh. Jared Is that Taylor. What we're doing? Jared Taylor, you're in a you're in a red room, a little red rum room. You're your own little big boy now, and I want to tell you you're my quarantine MVP. My quarantine <laughs> MVP. Well, I mean, I I did somehow get a new studio built while being sick, although there was a few days I didn't even leave my room. You also happened to get a uh, coli. A completely different yep. fucking pandemic <laughs> on your own. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. You're, you're back. You're up in Adam. Explain to the audience what you've been going through because it sounds eight million times worse than the actual pandemic that's going on. Well, you unless know, you're dead, so obviously. But it was mm. last Saturday. Um, I thought like I had crazy lower back pain and. I thought because I had been moving all this stuff out of this new studio and like building this space, I was carrying shit out in the sun every day for like three days. I just thought like I kind of overdid it. I wasn't drinking a lot of water and fucking was lifting a bunch of stuff, probably the incorrect way because, you know, I was just being lazy. And uh, so it started with like just hardcore lower back pain. And then later, later in the day, uh, my right like kidney just hurt like hell. Mm -hmm. And that, that kind of brought me back to when I had a kidney stone. So I was like, Oh shit, I've got a stone again. And like by that evening I was completely incapacitated. Like can't walk, can't get comfortable. You can't, you gotta, you know, you're constantly moving around cause you're just in constant pain. So I go, go to the hospital that night and they, uh, they CAT scan me. They do see a stone in my right kidney, but it hadn't dropped yet. So they were just like, okay, you're, you're showing infection in your kidneys. And, and, and this is what it might be being caused by that stone. So they, they put me on morphine twice. Uh, cause I was just in a bunch of pain and then morphine, you know, s yeah. God and damn it. Sent me, uh, sent me home about five hours later. Uh, with a, a an antibiotic that would wipe out, you know, any kidney infection and stuff like that. Well, that night is when like the stomach, the stomach pain just started, and it was just <coughs> constant, like level ten, super uncomfortable. You can't escape it, no matter what you do, like a shower, fucking trying to go to sleep. It's just you're, you got a fever and you're sweating and you're in constant pain. Yeah, sounds awesome. And, uh, so that morning I didn't sleep at all that night and I was just like, okay, this is, this is new. I don't know what this is now. Like this isn't kidney stones anymore. So I went back in, they, they again, uh, run more tests and then put me back on morphine again. Cause I can't even like sit down at this point. I was just like on my knees, like with my head on the floor every time the nurse would come in. I'm like, this hurts so bad. So like uh, um, converting to Islam kind of. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Pretty much. That's the position I'm in. Nice. Is I'm praying to the, I'm praying to Mecca. Yeah. And uh, Allah Akbar, um, <laughs> of course. And then you, yeah, your morning prayer. I'm, I'm assuming afternoon and night as well. Right. Well, it's just, that's the kind of the position that I'm just stuck in. And so, that's when they came back and the doctor was like, okay, I think this is a bacteria infection. Like you have something like E. coli. So they take more tests, give me a different medicine that would be something to wipe out like a different antibiotic that would wipe out some sort of stomach, uh, bacteria. And, uh, yeah, the next day they called and it was a bacteria in the E. coli family. That, Holy um, shit. And the E. coli yeah, family, you, you is never it, was know it where it comes from? Was it like in the immediate family or the extended family? Ah, the immediate, you know, I yeah. mean, he gave me the, the, the fucking technical term for it, but God knows what the fuck. And like let's, yeah, can, can we, let's a take a page. moment and I want to hear from the fans on this as well. Um, let's, let's come up with some theories about how this happened. Well, I, look, you know, you were in the – so just for the audience, it wasn't the E. coli family. It wasn't diagnosed like a certain, hey, man, like there's, is there levels to that or 
I mean, it's it, it, it's not necessarily levels. It's just that it's a bacteria that gets in your stomach and your intestine and just fucks you up. Okay, so, so you, you said it's, flat it's, out yeah, it's e. a back, coli. Like, yeah, I mean, it's okay. the same same exact thing. Like exactly how the dude explained it. Gotcha, gotcha. Was you know you, you, you know he says this giant fucking forty letter word and you're like, what is that? He goes, essentially, you have E. coli. Gotcha. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. Cause okay. when, I'm with you on, on families. Like I think of ABC, BBD and then boys to men is the East coast family. Um, but I want to know which one or what it's classified as, but if it's just E. coli overall, that's, that's fucking severe. Motown Philly's uh, back again. Yeah. So, well, I mean, supposedly there's plenty of these bacteria that are fucking even worse. Like Jesus, that you, you get, you know, eaten down, south or in the middle east and things like that like it's when you say it's, down it's south you mean on your, on your dick and stuff or yeah no 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 <laughs> central central south america water mm. type you know mm. unclean water everything like that like this shit this shit sneaks up on you quick and can kill you what's your guess as to how you contracted this i'm just curious what you think uh i mean i, I think i at the time you know i was moving the chickens like because they're they were in a super shitty spot in the yard and they were moving they were like migrating over to the pool deck so they were just ruining the pool with fucking their shit yeah um so i got rid of i was i was moving them so i had to move you know 30 some odd chickens and then cleaning up after them. I was pressure washing, you know, a lot of their mess. So I'm sure either, you know, hitting, hitting this stuff with a pressure washer that's putting it in the air and putting it all over my face and things like that. I mean, it's probably not hard to, to trace back where this, where this came from. It probably came from the animals. Yeah. You know, and, and Dan and I've been to your house. Um, you've got three wild turkeys, um, 30 chickens uh how many ducks baby ducks that were living in your living room at the time oh they're like full-size ducks now there's eight ducks eight ducks yeah and they were dirty real dirty and they were in inside your living room for a long time um when they were babies they were in a yeah little yeah you bet um or you know like a shoe container but um that you get at target one of your standard plastic plastic ones um i'm gonna i'm just gonna guess and say that it came from that that's me Oh no! I, I definitely think it either came from the turkeys or the chickens, just from moving them. <laughs> and then, so what like, have you? What I, have actually, you... now that I think about it, I think it was from like pressure washing, because I was pressure washing all their shit, and that stuff just fucking flies up and gets all over you. I guarantee, you, like that's that's probably where it, this is where uh, it originated. Exactly why I don't do anything. Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, of course. <laughs> um, so why I don't? Do what would you do with all the animals now? Oh no! I just I moved the chickens into the woods, um, and they're they're doing a lot better out there. So they've got their own patch of forest that they hang out in, away from the house. Um, Did you? Uh, what about the the ducks? Started, yeah, where the ducks? Well, are. I, no, I was curious. Oh, the ducks are the ducks are out in the fucking they 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 live in the woods as well. They do, they have their own thing. Do they uh, do they have Wi Fi and shit out there? Yeah, the, the ducks do. They're the only ones that use it. The chickens don't yeah. use the Wi-Fi. No, they can't. No, no chickens. Chickens don't really use allowed. It. Like who says they're not allowed? What do you mean? Well, there, there was some but people. I mean, there was some people, by the way, who looked at your Instagram because um, you, you have a pretty popular Instagram and said, "Hey, man, Jared just had a coli, yet he's holding up ducks again, like raw, you know, ducks and chickens and things like that. Is he worried about getting a coli again?" Uh, I wasn't holding any ducks. Yeah, you hold one, and the the caption said, "Sick my duck." I believe was the no, I I, I didn't do that. The, you were holding a duck, weeks. and it was down by your no, penis. It was, it that that's like four weeks old. Uh, we're just curious, Jared. A lot of listeners are curious, and, and that said, duck pick. <laughs> Again, it's a duck pick, yeah. Because we're, we're just wondering, <laughs> like, have you learned from your ways? Are you are you just going to keep handling these animals? Well, I mean, obviously, like, I already got it, so I can't get it again. Yeah, that was my next question. So you, you can't, right? It's like coronavirus. No, 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 no. A coli, a bacteria, <laughs> you can absolutely get that again. Yes, you can get it over and over a bac- again. A bacteria, is, <laughs> a bacteria is not a virus. You don't but create like, antibodies. Like you all know, you resistance know medicine to, isn't real. Yeah. Yeah. Medicine isn't real. 
So, He'll definitely be getting it again. Science yeah. is fake. So what you, is space? Exactly. So now now that we're we we've determined you're you're absolutely going to get this again. <laughs> um do you have the right meds at least for the next time around? Well, I know I know the signs. Okay. <laughs> like I know I know what it I know what it looks like now so I, you know you don't have to play the Dr. House game of oh my god, it's a kidney stone. We need to get you on these medicines and then you go back and it's oh my god, it wasn't a kidney stone. It was this. Yeah, you can just go back and say hey, it's Jared Taylor. Yeah, you can look at my chart. I have a coli. E- yeah, I've got hey, it again. E-, e coli again. Yeah, yeah you're going to hey, get a uh, they're going to e. give you a, yeah. they're going to give you a punch card. So every <laughs> every third time you get a coli, you get like a free Wendy's. Uh, you get a Philly frosty. cheese stick. You get a frosty from Wendy's. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, I have obviously I'm progressing. Prior to this, I had only given myself food poisoning a number of times. Now I've given myself E. coli. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. And if you ask me, that's progression. Speak, I've moved up. Speak, I'm graduating. Speak, I'm middle speak, management now. Speaking of moving up right now, Drink It Bro Sports is fifth. In the entire world. Behind all wrestling shows. Ah. One through four is uh, Talk is Jericho. Well, what Chris. are you guys even talking about? Yeah. Video so, games? Exactly. We're, mm. we're, we're down to video games at this point on uh, Drinking Bros. Esports. Luckily, UFC is coming back next week. I can tell you why yeah. res- wrestling's in the top four. Wrestling over the weekend actually held WrestleMania without an audience. So technically, they were the first sport back, quote unquote. They held it without an audience. John Cena came back, and they <laughs> shot this 12-minute, almost independent-looking thing where John Cena was fighting himself in his own mind against another person. And so oh, when he creative. would go... <laughs> yeah, that's what everybody online was saying. Hey, man, congratulations, I guess, with the quarantine. Who gives a shit? And, uh, yeah, he, he fought a dude inside of his own mind, and that was a 12-minute fight. So every time he went to dive at this guy, he would turn around, and the guy wouldn't be there. Um, and I'm uh, not gonna lie, I got locked into it. It was it was a full 12 minutes of my life. I've I'm I've glad I completely get back. zoned out of that. Oh, of of uh, no, of this conversation about that thing. Cause I feel like it would have been so absurd that even talking about it is doubly it's, absurd. It, it seems cra- it seems crazy, but it was it was peak 2020 for me. I'm gonna have to try like, to watch it now. Hey man, what the fuck are we doing? Um, to the point where they, you know, he's yelling at this guy um, about whatever the fuck is going on in their in their lives, and they start playing the theme music because his his ex fiance was uh, one of the Bella twins. She's got a huge show on E. Um, she's also a wrestler, one of the, the the biggest in the world, and they started playing her theme music to him, and she's currently knocked up with a baby right now from another dude in real life. So um, he Weird. went for it. He went for it, but but people are getting desperate out Good there. Good for him. Yeah, I mean it's you can't I mean, see I the guy, so yeah. Good, Good for what him. You got to do now. Yeah. yeah. So and that's where we are. You look like you're on the Al Jazeera network, which I like. Um, yeah, you look like somebody's going to come in from the fucking from stage left and cut your head off any minute. Me? Are yeah. You, are you in distress? Blink if you're in distress. No, I'm fine. No, you look great. Wait. What's uh, explain to the audience? You, you're setting up a new studio. Yeah, we uh, I cleared out. The giant storeroom. I mean, I'll have to show you guys a tour later um, once it's all updated. But I got the lights installed yesterday. Yeah. Um, I feel like this is a really dangerous scenario for all of humanity. I I, I got attempted to be gouged again, um, which is funny because this happens all the time. Price gouge? Um, Yeah. So, like, yeah, like, like we needed a part for the pump out here. Uh Uh-huh. And I was gone. And like the plumber, the the guy was just talking to Caitlin, and he's like, "Oh yeah, it's six hundred bucks." And then when when I got home and Jeremy got home, he was like, "This thing's like three dollars." Really? Like it's a it's a yeah. So the light guy comes in, and he comes back because I ins- I installed giant rows of can lights. That's all the Philips Hue, so I'm gonna be able to change the colors and like light this thing fucking nicely, and. Uh, he comes out and he looks at it and everything and he goes out to his car for like 30 minutes and comes back with his estimate and he's like okay here's the estimate you know here's here's labor here's parts and then he calls after he, you know he 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 sees right over here to my left which you can't see but it's the the drinking bros banner and everything mm-hmm. and he sees all this equipment in here with the new cameras and the lights and 
fucking all the computers and everything facing this set. And he's like, oh, you got a YouTube channel? And, yeah, it's a podcast, you know. And he took a picture of the drinking bros thing. And about 30 minutes after he leaves here, he was like, oh, hey, we made a mistake. Um, I misquoted you. It was actually $1,000 more. And I said, yeah, right, dude. Get the fuck out of here. I'll just have somebody else do it. This is dumb. And I hang up on him, and he calls back again. He's like, oh, I talked to my boss. Because we quoted you, we're just going to go ahead and do it for that price. It's like, no, dude, you do, the, you do everything everybody does. They come out to this house. They look around and then they go, okay, what, what could I get out of this? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's just like, no. So yeah, Mr. Electric, you can go fuck yourself in fucking San Antonio because you guys. Mr. Electric in San Antonio can go fuck himself. Um, what is, is it, is Mr. Electric a one man band? He's shady as fuck. No, no, I think (laughs) it's a, it's a, it's a fairly big one, but fuck them. You know, Mr. Mr. Electric is uh, he used to be General Electric. He's General Retired Electric now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. got a now son he's Mr. named he's, he's Mr. Electric. Mr. Yeah. He's got a son named Toby yeah. Electric. <laughs> I uh, in college I used to go by Mr. Electric for a while. It was a new nickname I was trying out for, you know, about 25 days. What um, I was going to say <laughs> is this is a super dangerous time in human history right now because Jared has like, nothing to do. Oh yeah! Like there's nothing but <laughs> there's nothing but means and opportunity there, and that usually spells trouble for someone. Well, today, Jared, you could uh, you could really troll the Bernie Bros. They're having a they're having a rough day today. Yeah, yeah, I saw that subreddit. They were like melting down. I like I like that. That's what we call them, the Bernie Bros. That's funny. I, it is. <laughs> what what did it say on their subreddit? Just out of curiosity, I was on air so I didn't get to see it. They were they were just all like, "There's a." There's a, a kind of a divide. There's like this meltdown of this isn't fair. Fuck this. Blah, 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 blah. But then there's also all these people that are trying to say all of us. It's our duty to shift to Biden. Like, and if you don't, you're against us. Like, it's just this fucking dumb bullshit. Like, dude, they, they, they can't get their shit in one sock. They don't even know what they want. I mean, again, this yeah. whole thing is fucking stupid. And honestly, like. I don't give a fuck what a college age person has to think about the country. Fuck them. Like they're not, they haven't <laughs> fucking lifted up a shovel. They haven't done anything. Like, it's like, I don't care what your fucking viewpoint is. You've never had to pay like legitimate taxes yet. So it's like the whole system is fucked. Well, it's not, it's not like it gets any better. Everybody's a fucking No, idiot. it doesn't. It's Everybody a, is every, a fucking every, idiot. Every vote is the same. And that is, that's a fallible system. Yeah. Rather than rather than it being a weighted system that we have citizens and non citizens or we have people that contribute to a mass amount, like votes shouldn't be equal. If you're the one carrying a brunt load, yeah, of course, if you if you depend on government subsidies and government aid and stuff like that, you're always gonna vote one way because you're not the one having to pay for it. That's yeah. a, that is dangerously close to the Missouri compromise, my man. I, we probably want to avoid that conversation, right? I, the three fifths why not? rule. Why not? I'm happy to have it because I, I, it's it's interesting you say that. I've, I've never heard you say that before. That it, that voting should be a weighted system. Um, I don't think voting. Absolutely. I don't think voting should exist. So what? Well, what, what, I, yeah, what should you're happen? leaving it up to. There's a large uneducated population, and that vote, like you. You have a lot of people that don't even educate themselves on anything. And Every, just, everybody that was on everybody you know, that was on Tiger King, cheap. Everybody that was on Tiger King has the same vote that you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's has the same vote. That's not like, okay. I mean, and obviously. it's like, listen, yes, in the United States of America, everybody is created equal. Created meaning when you're born, you're not born into a fucking forcible class. But guess what? After that. When it becomes your own your own destiny, people aren't equal anymore. There are shit bags out there. There are pieces of shit. There are fucking dirt bags, losers, lazy people. Like those people aren't the same. We're not equal anymore. Like you suck. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would say this though: if we're going Tiger King, people, the girl that lost her fucking arm mm. showed a lot of bravery. She should get the most v- weighted power of voting. I think out of that. I whole think it should tribe. be Carol Baskin. Ah, look. She's the one that got away with murder. Yeah, she's everybody else smart. is going to jail. She's pretty, and she's yeah. making millions. Yeah. yeah, she's making millions. So yeah, she's probably one Z. Oh and then the girl with the missing millions, arm now is two Z. Hand over fist, millions, untaxable. Yeah, it's great. Like, 
And, and, and the fucking thing about that is Carol is no different than any of the other ones. She, she wants to have her cat kingdom just like they do. Yeah. She, just disgu- she just disguises it as a nonprofit. Yeah, like, she she's just did shady. it a better way. She's the shadiest one of them all. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's not bad at all. What's your thoughts on a weighted uh, voting system? You said, you said voting doesn't, it shouldn't exist at all. How so? Um, I, I'm in favor, I've said this many times, of the benevolent dictatorship. Right. Like, I think I honestly believe that people I, I, I like the idea of freedom and shit like that. I got it. Got it, folks. Yeah, but is it but real? I mean, I, I, don't, I don't think it is. This I mean, is with the, the thing I want to I want to ask you, Dan, is is here's and here's a here's a perfect point for both Ross and Dan. Like you look at when the House when the House votes and when the Senate votes, it's all the Democrats vote the exact same thing. So there's no free thought. You're telling me not one Democrat that is a career politician went, you know what? I'm kind of in favor of this. So I'm, yeah, I'm going to vote. I'm going to vote for this because me personally, I like this, let alone they are representatives. So the system, you know, why isn't with technology? They're an app now that you scan your fucking your driver's license that puts you in a district and your congressman in your district can consistently every day put a poll up to say, hey, what do you guys want? Hey, we're about to vote on this. Who, who's for it? Who's against it? The people are supposed to be deciding these things, not the fucking elected officials. We don't care about their opinions. The representatives of a district. But it doesn't work like that. We've no. let it get to this point. Yeah, and I'll tell you why. First of all, it was with your first statement with uh, you should have an, an ID. You can't. You can't have a voter ID because that's that's racist. If you actually make people show their driver's license to prove that they're American citizens, so like here we don't have. You can just show up in North Carolina booths without it and just say, "Hey, it's garbage." I am who I say I am. Here's my address, and that's it. I got. I should see right through that. I understand the idea behind that, but the the data behind it shows very little voter fraud. Like there's been a comically low amount of voter fraud. So I don't know if it's really yeah, but this worth is the this is besides the yeah this is besides the point I'm, the point I'm making is representatives aren't representing their districts they're representing themselves and and just watching how the House and the Senate votes shows you right away that it's just one collective team versus another collective team like right. rather than independent thought or representing your district like. You're not, you know, look at some of these districts that, that voted, look at some of these representatives that voted for impeachment. Okay, let's, let's look at the Senate for that. Every Democrat voted for the impeachment, pretty much, uh, minus one, right? Uh, one Democrat was... No, every, every de- Democrat voted for it. Every Republican voted against it, except for one, and it was Mitt Romney. Yeah. So it's like, so was there any independent thought there? You're telling me not one single Democrat's fucking district said you know what we're not for this did they yeah. even bother asking well you're 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 or are they all just doing their own fucking thing you're highlighting the the true downfall of our system of government and that is that the fallacy it's, of the system well it's yeah. not it, that's part of it but it's really the scalability of the system i mean look when you have a couple of thousand people it's easy to get everybody in a room do a show of hands and decide what everybody wants and then have a representative yeah. go discuss that with other representatives that's easy but when you have millions of people or you got to utilize technology 320 i don't think technology i don't think there is a, a solution for a country this big uh as far as representative democracy goes and here's why so what we have now is effectively what i i, I would call this an oligarchy right like we have a ruling political yeah, class oligarchy. every now and again people get in and get out and stuff like that but the bush family the fucking trump family now the fucking clinton family um, the the Pierce family. Yeah, it's all, all the same families. People. Yeah, they, the, they've been around they're generational. You know. Yeah, they've been around forever. They're not going anywhere. The Cuomos. I mean, they're all they're always going to be there. So my thinking is, if you, I, I'm in favor of a benevolent dictatorship because I think you mitigate more risk by having a single person making decisions like that. Not that he do, this man or woman doesn't have a cabinet, but um, you can't. There's more. Well, it's, no, there's it's, it's, it's no different. Exactly what you're saying. It's no different than us having a house that is just 
one team versus the other team and they don't they don't even fucking escape either of their borders that's pointless it's uh, it's utter pointless it's always a draw there's more risk you know, unless, with one person but you can also get rid of one person easier like this whole dream the swamp thing the fact that the entire system has been corrupted including the representatives of the system um and maybe not even corrupted through their own fault it's just the system has collapsed because it doesn't bear the weight of this amount of people like you you can't take a system that was designed for two million people and map it onto 320 million people it doesn't work like that, that yeah like that. no you're so, absolutely right so i think and that's my be, same i think it would be it would make more sense for america to have a benevolent dictatorship with something more like uh like the magna carta that described inherent rights and shit like that than it would be to have this draconian tax law and all this other horse shit that we have um and m- more more than just having the one person is having uh less things to get out of the way like one of, one of the principles that ray dalio discussed is called the hire slow fire fast which the idea is that you should take your time hiring somebody and it, but as soon as you see they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing get get them the fuck out of there yeah and it's it's a principle yeah. for life as well like as soon as you see a path you're on not working get the fuck out yeah like trump does it all the time yeah so uh people see it as flighty or whatever the fuck but really it's just data you're following the data so for me the data says it's a lot harder to get rid of 535 people so congress and the senate yeah it's yeah. harder to turn that over than it would be to overthrow or whatever happened t- to a single dictator like one person in charge, a king or a queen, or right? Fucking yeah, but it's also like even even more so now that now that we get into the the high technology and data age, where we're we we are able to communicate the best we've ever been able to communicate intercontinental immediately. Like information is shared, like it's never been shared before. But now, it's it's shown us though that. Some of these, some of these families are above the law. The Clintons are are a fucking perfect example. You know, you're firing a captain of of a United States Navy ship this week for breach of OPSEC. You know, for for leaking classified information. Well, Hillary Clinton did the same thing, and and. We just ignore that, you know? Yeah, and, and I'd love to hear you guys' thoughts on this because, you know, as a civilian, we don't really understand the chain of command and what is supposed to happen on that ship. Trump had his own thoughts on it at a press conference the other day. If you were in charge, what would you have done in that situation where, what, 172 sailors ended up getting coronavirus? I would have fired the ship. Every, no, there's everyone. Three, there's 3,000. Everyone in the boat. chain of command above this captain, I mm-hmm. would have fired. Yes. Like every single one of them, including the acting secretary of the Navy, because this dude had been trying for some time to let everybody know what the fuck was going on. Now he's been fired and he's got the goddamn coronavirus. Right. So it's like this dude, look, the the chain of command is what it is. You don't want to go like usually there's an open door policy for command level stuff. But he there's yeah, a, there's, that's it's an open door policy, though, has always been loosely given because anytime you bring up anybody that's been in the military <laughs> when you bring up shit that's going fucking south that you're like hey this is wrong generally nine times out of ten they're like eh, how about you hush up about that here's the problem in the military when something like that goes down <laughs> yeah. and it's the same thing on i'm sure our police out there and have experienced the exact same thing but whomever decides to stop what they're doing and deal with that issue becomes the face of the issue. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And people are fucking pussies. They don't want to do it. So whomever this guy, whoever this captain reported this shit to was like, we don't want to make the Trump administration look bad right now, or we don't want to do this or that. And it's like, uh, fuck that. Trump yeah, doesn't we need, care. We need like, help. It, it, yeah. Did you hear the secretary of the Navy's reasoning was you guys, you guys put a lot of worry in all the local Guamanians. It's like, shut the fuck up. Who cares about them? Like, fuck that. Yeah. Speaking we're, of. <laughs> I, I, we're going to be quiet because we're worried about what local Guamanians are thinking about. Yeah. If we're trying to discuss a fucking disaster going on on a United States aircraft carrier, like, get the fuck out of here. But at the end of the like, day, if you're a commander of troops, whether it be sailors, soldiers, airmen, Marines, whatever the case is, uh, whatever Coast Guard people call themselves, I don't know what they call themselves, um, 
if you're in charge of people and you try to go through your ch chain of command and you can't get help and you feel like there are people at imminent risk of death, fuck chain of command, period. Right. Like yeah. your, your ultimate like responsibility is to take care of your troops, right? This but there's one win. There's one win in this, Dan, and that win is finally because of the information and data age, because everybody has a cell phone now, and because those videos surface of the entire crew in support of that captain when he was fucking escorted off the boat and relieved, that is what changed the tide and what caused the fucking Secretary of the Navy to be fucking axed, was, was that right there. When you have your entire crew pissed off that you just got relieved because you were trying to protect them, now shit's going to fucking roll uphill. You know what I mean? Yeah, so what, what happens to him now is what I wonder. To the captain? Yeah, because he was fired, and then obviously he's got coronavirus he'll probably, on top of it. He'll probably get, after all, this is my, I'm just guessing here because I have no idea, but based on what Trump said at, the, at his press conference the other day about wanting to look into this and not ruin a guy's career over it, my uh -huh. guess is that he would get a secret letter of reprimand in his file. He'll go dark, do some staff job for the next year or two. And for like two years, yeah, and, and then, then he'll, he'll come back. As a, he'll come Hopefully back as he gets promoted. Somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. He, he'll, he'll get promoted. I gotcha. Think. Gotcha. As yeah. long as, as long as like Trump, like, like when they, when they look into this, like if they cleaned the chain of command up above, otherwise you're going to be in another Eddie Gallagher situation where there's, there's a lot of two stars and three stars in the Navy that are pissed off that now this guy's getting, you know, they were part of the problem so they could try and fucking hold this dude from ever getting a star. You know what I mean? Well, the government's handling of the Navy over the last two years or so has been pretty fucked. And it's luckily, <laughs> I don't know. Can you, can you give us some breaking news right now? It's not really breaking news yet. I don't think anybody knows about this yet, but we have some news about one of the, one of the Navy situations. Oh God. <laughs> you ready for the this? fucking yeah. mercy fire yeah. away. You know, the, the mercy, the I ship guess, that's parked yeah, off the, the coast of yeah. New York. Mm hmm. What about it? Um, so supposedly that was going to be uh, a field hospital, like uh, for them to do surgeries and emergencies that hospitals are overrun with COVID right now are, are, are have to put on the back burner. Yes. So they kept that thing off the coast so it was isolated, mm -hmm. but I guess they accidentally let fucking coronavirus people on there and compromised it, and now they're evacuating the whole thing. <laughs> Is that that's happening right now? Yeah. You're fucking yeah. kidding me. <laughs> I don't, the news media is not even reporting it yet. We just heard from some people. No way. Yeah, we just we we got a we got a little tip. You didn't want to lead with that tonight. I mean, no. <laughs> no. fucking a. Are you serious? Shit is going to hit the fucking fan, yeah. man. If that comes out today, uh, how many people well, were infected? Do you know? No, no, I don't. I don't got details. I just heard that they. They were compromised, and their plan isn't going to work, so they've got to shift it to something new. Oof, but you know this is going to give man. more fucking I mean, airtime to um, the Cuomo sexuals, dude. <laughs> yeah. The Cuomo sexuals are going to be out tonight. Speaking of Cuomo, so CNN printed an article yesterday, and it was like, uh, it's typical CNN bullshit. Yeah. It's like uh, coronavirus yeah. disproportionately affecting black Americans. Like, all right, cool. Well, let me look into this because I'm curious. I, I, curious about genetics and shit like that maybe it's something like that no it's just like poverty yeah it was uh 41 percent. so 41 percent of the deaths are african-americans yeah and yes it, it has nothing to do with yeah, genetics but also too it's, it's poverty many, it's poverty like, and access to health like like yeah. look at this yeah it's like it's like okay how many people got sick and then reacted to getting sick you know or how many people just ignored it Got sick and oh, annoyed. those that data. Like we'll, that's, we'll, we'll get to that data in a sec because there's been another update on the body count. By the way, oh, go ahead. Yeah. So we we were down I mean, to eighty two thousand as of last count. What are, what are they predicting hey, now? Let me let me get through this first part first. Sure. So, um, so I read I read the whole article and it's just socioeconomic stuff. Like, yeah, it makes sense. There's a lot of poor black people. Got it. Yeah. But this isn't something new. It's like. You don't have to turn every issue into something that divides us, for example. And now today Cuomo announces we're going to do more testing in black communities. I'm fine with that, I guess, as long as it's not pulling testing away from first responders. Yeah. And people who actually needed people in hospitals. Like, don't go – just because there's a headline on CNN, 
By the way, uh, Cuomo family, no one watches CNN. They are the least rated fucking cable news network. Correct. <laughs> they're Correct. the worst. And they're losing listeners during now when no one can even leave their house. Joe Rogan has double <laughs> the amount of viewers that CNN has for the entire month. Um, Joe oh Rogan has God, double the amounts on, on just his daily shows than, uh, than all in the entire CNN. But to me, when I looked at the map, when, this, when the outbreaks first started a couple weeks ago, and they were like, all right, here's the, the hot zones. You had L.A., you had New York, you had Detroit, you had New Orleans. Anywhere there's a large population. New York, Seattle. There's, there's going to be Seattle. Seattle. Yeah, Seattle. But that's a, a large homeless population. Mm. And in particular, that's a lot of African Americans yeah. in poverty in those cities. To me, when I read those statistics, I, I was not surprised. I'm it's not a, surprised by it, and I don't think it's something we should just accept either, but it's like. Me neither. This isn't, like, yeah. why are you making this point now? It seems strange, and the other thing is, what's um, the point? What's yeah. the point? The like point it's, is, it's, the, <laughs> their point is that there's a lot of poor black and brown people in this country. Yes, I guess is their point. They're trying to make no. Like, I mean, no. See, not, the thing see, is, is like, what's the point of the headline? Like, the point. The point of the headline is to divide people. Divide people. It, yeah. It just pushes that narrative that the government needs to step in and help people, but the government's been largely unsuccessful at defeating poverty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when I say largely unsuccessful, yeah. I read wholly unsuccessful of all time like there's you know, you know who else has been unsuccessful at defeating poverty is mega churches you know that's weird <laughs> well it's weird they have the, been they have been largely unsuccessful mega, mega with, churches with mega them. churches are basically like religious scratcher tickets that's all they are dude. <laughs> yeah like you're going in there i'm not kidding if you listen to their ideology like uh paul and jan crouch who ran tvn network for all that time mm -hmm. benny uh benny hen fucking uh uh what's his name the guy uh that's Oh, fuck Talking Osteen. about Joel, Joel Osteen? Joel Osteen's one of them, too, yeah. Oh, He's, I was thinking of Kenneth Copeland, the older guy that, like, stares at people. Yeah. COVID-19! Yeah, 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 yeah. And then he blows COVID-19 onto everybody. Yeah. Uh, that, th <laughs> those guys, basically, what, what their congregations are doing, they're going in there and be like, hey, here's 10% of my money. Like, all these people are super right-wing. They don't want to pay taxes, but they'll go give this asshole who has two private jets, like, 10%. Here's 10% yeah. of my money, and they're fucking... It's, it's called the word of faith movement, and they believe that you can speak things oh into God. existence. Hey. They believe it's, it's basically like the secret, yeah. but with Jesus. Well, with Jesus, Like, yeah. they argue that Jesus was a very rich man, mm -hmm. and what? No, nope. no. He's poor as fuck, bro. Poor as shit. Um, I don't think, <laughs> at, at any rate, the, the gamble, it's, it's almost like Pascal's wager. It's like, uh, here's some money. Maybe I'll get rich someday. Right. It's like a fucking pyramid scheme, essentially, but it's scratcher yeah. tickets. No, it's, it is. It's, 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 it's dumb people giving their money to somebody that's a fucking snake. Yeah, and, and, that's and, and speaking of which, uh, o Osteen, uh, our boy, <laughs> fucking Joel Osteen. The purpose-driven life. My purpose is to take your money. It, to take your money, and not only that, but the biggest day yeah. to take it on is coming up on Sunday, which is Easter, right? Mm -hmm. So all of the churches yep. are shut. Everybody is under lockdown and quarantine. And, uh, you know, the those Florida pastors are taking heat for having their churches open, which, look, they're just trying to fucking make their money, obviously. <laughs> those fucking guys. So Osteen announces that he's going to do it uh, around the world on some wire cast. Um, and it's going to be him, Kanye West, uh, Tyler Perry. Wow. And Mariah Don't Carey Kanye. on Sunday. So. They're going to figure out a way to, to get your money uh, this Sunday with, with her, <laughs> yep. with or without uh, COVID-19. They're going to get that money. Yep, they're mm. going to get that money. So you can look out for that on Sunday if you're bored. All right. Well, give, give that a little peek. I probably season. won't be doing that. Damn, I'll you'll probably, be huddled up. I'll be I mean, high. I just wish drugs. they would, if they, if they just started a pay-per-view from like, like South Africa where they set Joel Osteen on fire. I would pay for that. <laughs> Do you remember that movie that Stone Cold Steve Austin was in? Um, what the fuck was it called where he was like on an island fighting? Death Race? No. Hold on. Let me see what it was. Uh, yeah, was I know, I know what you're talking Fighting about. on an island? It was one of those. You might be talking about every it was Stone Cold Steve Austin yeah. no, it's, movie. It's called The Condemned. Yeah. Okay. It's actually a pretty decent movie. It's, it's a little hokey, but it's a pretty decent movie. It's got uh, Manu Bennett in it, if you know who that is. The guy from Rome. Not, oh, not, yeah. Ro not Rome from uh, Spartacus. Spartacus, yeah. Um, anyways, I would I would pay to see something like that right now. Can't we get some mo like it's the end of the world or whatever? If we're gonna take this seriously or pretend like this any of this shit matters, let's go all out, brother. Let's kill people. Like, yeah, I it. want the most dangerous game right now. Yeah, let's go hunt people on an <laughs> island. I don't see on pay per view you and can, pay per view it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like you know how much money you would make from that. Uh, all, here's oh, here's what you God. need. Here's Million. what you need to get it done. Eventually, need, I think it's gonna happen. 
Here's so what do you, I. All you need to get it done, and Dana White has started it. Like, he's bought a private island just to have fights on so he can do whatever the fuck he wants. Yeah. This is the beginning, right? The next step to that is to sell the pay-per-view. And look, American uh, ISPs will have to block it. I mean, but then you're going to use dude, you, VPN to get by that. Yeah, so you're fine. When you, really, when you really look into some of this stuff, though, and how weird and shady some of these governing bodies are because I remember I was part of uh, I was I was doing some film work for a mixed martial arts program back in like 2011 and when you go down the road of like the boxing commission it's so fucking corrupt and shady <clears throat> and it's like you have to have permission and pay a stipend to the boxing commission to hold anything yeah like and then you have to follow and it's like wait a minute it's it's just like SAG. This is made up. Yeah. You are a made up organization. Yeah. Why the fuck do I have to listen to you? Like, well, what do well, you mean you're going to slap me with a fine? You're not a government agency. That's crazy. <laughs> like, <laughs> you're the fucking boxing commission. Who gives a fuck? Yeah, it's 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 absolutely fucking crazy. And uh, Dana White, by the way, the the island fell out. Something happened um, where they couldn't get them there in time or something like that. So they're doing it on an Indian reservation casino in uh, oh that's funny california yeah. actually so and you don't have to follow anyone's rules Correct. that's amazing Correct. i love i love people that that find a way to fucking stick it to 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 like the boxing commission it's like dana white you. is Dude. doing it in a quarantine state on an indian reservation that's it's amazing he's doing it in california <laughs> <laughs> yeah get the fuck out of here Get the fuck out of here. But look, I hope they're sleeping comfortably, uh, <laughs> preferably on a ghost bed from ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. 25% off everything there. And I think there's 11 hours left on that deal. Uh, go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today. Get yourself a mattress, pillows, sheets, or adjustable base. Everything is 25% off. As always, there's a 36 month pay as you go program and no interest. At uh, ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. And that is applicable with the 25% off. So uh, feel free to go there. Jared Taylor, what's happening at blackriflecoffee.com? Well, we are still doing the buy a bag, give a bag. So uh, the bags of coffee that you buy, one bag's being donated to first responder nurses and hospitals. <laughs> so we're maintaining a large list of different hospitals that are getting hit hard and we are continuously every week shipping out massive packages of coffee based on what you guys buy a bag is going to first responders firefighters police nurses doctors uh and you know we've got a steady stream of people writing in every week uh to get their their uh, organization on the list um so Right now, go to BlackRifleCoffee.com, get yourself a bag of coffee, join the club. That yes. way you don't have to worry about coffee anymore. You don't have to worry about going to the grocery store and that aisle being out um, because you get it auto-shipped to your door. Goddamn right. Month. Corona free. Uh, um, Drinking Bros 20 then, is the promo code there for 20% off at BlackRifleCoffee.com. Hopefully soon uh, my store will be opening up. It's just obviously the delays on creating these products. Um, I, I should have that hopefully open within the next three weeks. And then you'll be able to get all the things that I just make for myself. And you always see me on social media wearing now it'll be available to everybody in the drinking bros community. Yeah. Hey, let me ask you this. Um, uh, the, the cans, the drinkable cans, everybody's asking where they can get those and, and when they'll be in stores online everywhere. right now. Um, there's some good promos going for the cans as well as, um, I think they're about five days away from finishing all the software and uh, code upgrades so you can do a can club. So don't wait for your coffee anymore. Have it in a can every morning in the fridge. You can have these things auto ship to you once a week, once every two weeks. That way you don't have to go fight people in the uh, gas stations to get them. That's awesome. So you can, you can just buy a case off of blackriflecoffee.com and it'll, it'll ship to you? Yes. That's great. That is it. And Drinking Bros. And I believe 20. it's like buy one case, get one half off. Really? Right now. Damn. And uh, <laughs> use the promo code Drinking Bros. 20 for everything at BlackRifleCoffee.com. Next up, we got KillCliffCBD.com. Woo! Put a little CBD in your system, D'Anthony. Um, I've been gunning through these things. Have you? Uh, yeah, I've got more on the way. I'm down to two right now. <laughs> no, I, dude, I, I've got some in the office over here. Um, 
I'm, I'm down to my last thing. I got to get another case. KillCliffCBD.com, 30% off now with the promo code Drinking Bros. 30% Damn. off. Damn. I know, and free shipping, dude. Uh, we're gigantic fans of them. I love the fact that John Brinks is working over there, too. Mm-hmm. Shit, man. Uh, they got grape, orange, and mango. Grape is my, my all-time fave, dude. Uh, I, I vodka it up as well. Um, great to fucking come down to after a workout or, or just to get a little a couple Z's in uh, before the nighttime hits. <clears throat> or if you have any uh, joints issues or pains or any of that stuff. I feel, like it, I feel like it relaxes my butthole before I take dumps. Ah, you don't say. I was expecting mm. the, the something else to go up there. No. Like mm. a suppository or something. No, dumps. Go to killcliffcbd.com, mm. promo code Drinking Bros, 30% off, um, and free shipping. You can just get a case shipped right to your house during these times. <sighs> Best in the biz. And then... Uh, it is really good. It's great. Now I'm craving one. Ah, you should. Um, and then, now uh, I'm craving la- one. Last but not least, um, my bookie hit us up today. Mm-hmm. And they said, hey, man, the casino has been going great. Um a lot of people are playing online. I look. I keep noticing more and more sports. We talked about the. Did I, we just talk about the iRacing racing with you, Jared. How they swapped out NASCAR. Yeah. Oh yeah. They're just playing fucking video games on Sundays on yeah. on NASCAR now, and it's almost as goddamn exciting, more exciting than the fucking NASCAR race <laughs> itself. They're if they're not careful, they're going to replace their whole sport. With that, just having those drivers sit in simulators and talk shit all day. It's fucking free. I know. If the same, if, if, if the <laughs> same amount of people are tuning in to watch them race a digital car, yeah. why would you spend millions of dollars on a car? Yeah, what this? does it cost? Like, uh, like $16 million millions. a year? Yeah. Millions. Like, I think it's yeah. $16 million a year for the lower level NASCAR to continue. That's impo- yeah, it's, it, yeah it's, it's impossible. So. Um, but yeah, you can bet on video games. Yeah, and now look, everybody's going to online casinos because they're you bored of shit. You can bet on the fucking weather. Yeah, you can bet on the weather. You can bet on uh, wow. everything. So go to, look, go to mybookie.com, promo code Drinking Bros Casino. Um, we'll get you a, a 150%. Plus your deposit. So you can, if you, you can if you put bet. in a grand, you're going to get 1500 on top of it. And uh, you can play slots, blackjack, <laughs> poker, all that shit. And you can bet Damn. on everything. Um, the other one you is... Can, you can bet on the temperature at LAX tomorrow at 6 p.m. Eastern. Yes. Yes. You can, you can bet on all of it. <laughs> There's people watching it all the time. And, uh, you know, oh, you got to, you, Jamie, did you bring some Kill Cliff in here? Yeah, I did. Look well, at that. Look at that. This is from Tactical Brewing. All right. actually. Yeah, we're a big fan of those beers. Cherry, yeah. almond, sour. Ooh, I'm, I'm going to drink this. Yeah, I love Tactical Brewing. But, uh, yeah, so go to myboogie.com, promo code Drinking Bros Casino. Uh, doubles and a half your deposit on there, and you can bet on that. And then next week, we're going to be betting on the fight and, uh, and watching it live here, the UFC fight. And that's promo code Drinking Bros. Finally, gambling is back. We have one sport to bet on, and I have a feeling us and the rest of the world are going to be watching that. Uh, Jared, <laughs> what kind of porn are you watching now during the quarantine? I feel like you're our go-to <laughs> porn guy. You hey, hit, hey, you, hey. Yeah, you hit me uh, yeah. up with uh, uh, some fun videos. Tell the audience what's, uh, what you're getting into sexually these days. All right. So, like, honestly, I just want to – like, obviously, I, I'm always up to date on Internet trends. Yeah. And I, I think of things randomly and go, okay, I wonder if people have started that yet. And, you know – the last 18 months, YouTube has done a massive shift to where uh, long form content is much more uh, consumed than it's ever been. So people are now liking to tune in to an hour show like Drinking right. Bros when it's on YouTube. Yes. They like to tune into these vlogs. Vlogs have become extremely popular uh, where it's just these personalities doing everyday normal things or going on a trip or doing whatever. So I, I got on you, you porn or porn, porn hub. I'm sorry. They're the, they're the leaders in, in, in user generated content. And, uh, I just searched vlog and yeah. saw that there are thousands now of just regular couples that are shooting these 45 minute to an hour vlogs yeah. of them just doing normal shit and then fucking <laughs> and then boning on top of it. You hit me up because I, yeah. I was, you know, I said you were my quarantine MVP because, you know, you were the one who hit me up with the, the stand up videos. And I was just like, oh, the vertical shit. videos, yeah, the vertical yeah. videos. <laughs> Porn was amazing. And then I looked up your sex vlog videos and that was amazing. The winner for me was the one in Italy, the couple in Italy. The girl was the, tattooed. The, the Italy couple. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's they were really taking advantage of everyone. They being, rented a 
yeah, rented, rented a, boat. a fucking boat, dude, during the quarantine. And then, and then they're just like, they're just like, like she's like, you know, he's got his GoPro underwater and she's taking off her swimsuit bottoms. It's just this normal couple. Yeah. Like, hey, we have a go. We have a GoPro. <laughs> what I didn't notice were they monetized or not? Or were they just doing that for funsies? No, I don't think so. They yeah. were not. They're not monetized. Yet. It just looked like mm. they were doing it for fun. But I saw that they had put out, I think, three so far. So they're like they're starting this now. Ah, uh, that's a fun couple to watch. That girl but with then the tats. The the, the, the <clears throat> desert bus one. That one. Yeah. Explain the, explain the desert bus one to the audience. <laughs> I, so I, I don't know what country those two were from because I know one was speaking <laughs> Spanish at some point. Yeah. But I think she was she was speaking some European country language, but they were just like walking through the desert because their van broke down and they found a bus. They were like, oh, let's fuck on this bus. That's a totally <laughs> rational decision to make, though. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know what I've been thinking about lately is fish. The band or the With animals? An F. Okay. With animals. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was just thinking, I, I was thinking about it the other day, uh, and I realized how lucky human beings are to be one of the very few species that fuck for pleasure, right? Okay. Lucky, lucky and not lucky. Like our civilization has been heavily influenced by <laughs> bullshit relating to yeah. vaginas. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, yes. And the weakness yes. of I mean, men you've to been, stay away from them. <laughs> millions of people have died yeah. over yeah. a, a a rich man's qu- quarrel yeah. with a, a woman. Yeah. But here's here's how this is. Uh, let me follow me down this this dark dark road. It's gonna get weird. Uh, sure. So, uh, <laughs> um, so fish basically they do something called uh, broadcast fertilization, which okay. means so essentially like a salmon, for example, will swim back up. It'll go out into the ocean and swim back up the river that it came from. It knows that somehow. I don't know magnets in its head. Who knows? Yeah. But. The female will lay eggs on the the riverbed, mm-hmm. and then a dude will come by and just fucking come on them. Okay, right. So yeah. I was thinking about what that would look like for human beings. If the if the <laughs> egg, and you're just gonna leave that there. We're just gonna leave that that ball out. Like on random the playground. Women are just like egging all over the place, dropping eggs on the like side of the highway, and then dudes Fo- are just pulling up and jacking off all over. But them? F- follow it though. Because okay. what, what is a woman egging? What is that? I, I mean, she's got eggs inside of her. I know, so but what is to... that process called? Eh, she's, it's kind of like a heavy flow period. Maybe. It's a period. Yeah. So basically, if, if we procreated like fish, a woman would fucking have her period on the ground, and then we would come by and jack off on it. Yeah. None of that, <laughs> would, none of that would be fun, but civilization might be better for it, you know? Eh, or maybe against it. I don't know. I don't know. Then I you'd have a bunch I of free range kids. I think we should try it. Well, I, if I there are any ladies out there that want possible, but any, of the, yeah. any of the three of us to jack off on your periods, just let us know. Sure. You could send those periods <laughs> to uh, what's, at, what's, at Dan Holloway. What's at the Instagram. Dot com. Show you got to show the period, though. First, we got to see. No, that. I need to oh, have yeah. it in my possession. Yeah. 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 So you got to send it to the P.O. box. Uh, yeah. So I would, oh, well, I would definitely send the pics first to at Dan Holloway on Instagram. You. And then and then afterwards, <laughs> you want to bottle up that period and then send it into the P.O. box. Uh, we'll give you one. Can but, you imagine? Uh, what if Aquaman like the first could you imagine the first chick that Aquaman Dan, ever fucked, dude, the first chick Aquaman ever fucked had to be like, what are you doing, dude? Like he shows you imagine? up and it's a long weekend and she's on her period. She's like, hey, we can't have sex right now. He goes, I, I don't know what that means because he's a fucking fish, could, right? Could yeah. you imagine if Dan went to the post office and I'm just sitting like with a super huge stomach and a ton of like like 600 bags of just bloody fucking like 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 napkins everywhere and it's all over my face and I'm just like I accidentally ate all the periods. Oh god. <laughs> Are we there yet in the quarantine times? <laughs> we're, we're, we're just eating periods I'm in just, the in the quarantine like times. Dan walks in to gather them and I've 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 got there early and I accidentally ate all of them. Oh, it's god. like it's like Chris Farley and Norm McDonald and uh, Billy Madison. <laughs> Sitting outside the school bus, eating everybody's lunches. Uh, <laughs> what would be the accident on your end, Jared? You know, like, oh man, I didn't well, he know was that. hungry. And yeah, they were, they yeah, were but there. I, I just got, but I have this huge stomach. Like, it just looks like I, 
I ate three Thanksgiving dinners. And there's it's a like lot of protein in eggs, too. Oh, God. <laughs> there's a ton of protein in eggs. I can taste it in my mouth. It's like and, uh, then, and then Ross gives me a ride home, and I start throwing up in his car. Oh, God. I, I can taste that. <laughs> it's, like, it's like pennies in your mouth uh, mixed with uh, mild sauce from Taco Bell. Oh, uh, yeah, you just you can't. Yeah, oh. you can't get that smell out of your car carpet either. Like it smells like bad milk. No, and then Aquaman shows up and jacks off on the pile. Yeah, 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 just right on the pile. And then, <laughs> Sorry, I'm just trying to make some kids here. Yeah, there's going to be about 14 of them ready in about two weeks. So just let those sit. For what is two the weeks. gestation rate for a fish? I don't know. Man, I don't I, know. that is something I've never contemplated or even thought about in my entire life. The point of all that was but, we're very fortunate as human beings to be, we able, are. To be do able fish, to. Do fish have a long term memory? Uh, I doubt it. I don't think so either because. No. They don't have a central nervous system either. Yeah, so you're saying that we could bang them and get away so with they it, do, basically. Well, do they do they feel pain when you hook them in the mouth? Um, that I don't know about. Huh. I why, mean, if, why? They don't, if, they, if they don't have any nerves. Why are you asking about pain? What are you planning to do to these fish, Jared? I'm not planning to do anything. Well, to it fish. sounded like seen? you were planning to do something to the fish. Like yeah. usually, usually you don't ask, like, hey, can they feel pain? Yeah, I, it when we're like talking about your dick inside one. No, would you? Fuck I'm just a fish? saying yes they can't. No. They can't feel pain. If no. you were, if you were on a deserted island, you wouldn't fuck fish. Is it the red? He- is it the redhead from fucking from Aquaman? Um, the redhead from Aquaman. I, you know, I haven't seen Aquaman. I'm. Yeah. I, I hate superheroes. Oh, it's good. Movies. Who played? Really? Who played it's her? Good. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good. I don't know. Who Who is it, Jamie? No, She's hot. Period fish. Gestation period is 28 days for fish. Jamie is saying so. Uh, that's a long time. Nicole Kidman, is that what you're talking about? No, that's the old one. Amber, I said the Amber Heard. Well, she's not redhead. She may uh, be in that movie. Amber Heard. That was uh, Johnny Depp's crazy ex-wife who beat the shit out of him. Yeah, but apparently she beat the shit oh, out of him, too. too. That's what I'm saying. Did she Johnny beat the Depp shit ever out of make him. any money back or what? Well, they're, they're still in this, this uh, lawsuit right now, and he's got all these hidden tapes of her, uh, you know, of her on, what? on film saying that she beat him. So she was the one. No, that was I meant like, did giant. he ever make any money back? Oh, does f- he have money yet? No, dude, he's that, that he's beyond broke. If that's a term right now, he's trying to sell everything well, that he, he possibly has. Yeah. You know what he should why start he doing movies. Then? All of Hollywood is shut down. So yeah, he should sell some of those of leather work. bracelets he has. Yeah. Oh, he's dude, got, he's, got that's too many. Th- he's got, got too many. Sorry. That's something. That's something sorry. I was thinking about, Ross. And you know, you know exactly when I say this, how much this this is devastating. Think how many independents or first-time writers, directors, and producers Mm -hmm. that were on the final stages of a project, like getting green lit when this all went down. Dude, dude, it's all news. Or, or just, or just like they got green lit, and then three days later, virus happens, and it's like boom, ripped away. Like the excitement and the celebration, and then the oh my god, we're not going to. So many things can go wrong from the time a project gets green lit until it actually hits the screen. Yeah, like there's so many buried projects. Oh, uh, dude, if you, I, no, that's that's I what Holly, like, Hollywood should do. That right now, people, Hollywood should look through all of its stuff that got stuck in post and mm-hmm. be putting that out right now. Yeah, I mean, look, yeah. you, oh, just hire editors and yeah. like go back through and look yep. at all the fucking things that never made it to fruition. That would be cool. Because there's shit. there's hundreds, if not thousands, of films yes. that are digital Easy. right now that have never seen the light of day. Correct, and and, no. and I think that's probably what they're going to do. However, they can't have any staff right now. So to get these contracts and all this shit done, like it's a clusterfuck. Because when we we always say there's too many cooks in the kitchen in Hollywood, you can't get them together and they're all you know trying Zoom and all this other bullshit. But you know what happened to a a friend of ours, um, Tyler Kornack from Tiny Cinema. Their movie Butt Boy is supposed to be in theaters last weekend. Uh, It's it's going to digital on uh, the 14th, which I'm amped about. But uh, those guys, man, I mean, imagine, dude, you work on a movie for three years. It got a theatrical a theater release, release and then that's and then ripped boom, away. Yeah. No premiere, no nothing. Mm-hmm. It's just going to digital. I can't wait to see the movie because I'm, you know, I'm amped and we're personal fans. But God damn, man, off air, I was like, that sucks, man. How I'm pissed really are they going to be that. when like 30,000 people die from this? Because here's what we were talking about earlier. So the original number that the government started out with was 2.2 million. Okay. And that was quickly dispelled. Yeah. Um, and then I heard somewhere between uh, 240,000 and maybe 100,000 at the low end. Well, it's, it's crept downward. And look, the, one of the reasons is because of 
isolation and shit like that. Okay. Like the 2.2, 2, the, the very large number was if we didn't do anything. Right. Right. Which still I would have been fine with. But uh, once we started enacting measures, they're like, all right, I think we have it under control. We're looking at like, I don't know, a quarter million deaths. That was a week ago. <clears throat> and it came down to 100,000 after that. And then what's, what's today, Wednesday? Yeah. Yesterday, Tuesday, yeah. Um, it went from 100 down to 80, 82. 82. Yeah. And today it's – these are all from CNN, by the way. Okay. Today it's uh, 60,000. 60,000. Wow. So gotcha. every day – well, not every day, but over the last We're week and a half. 20%. Yeah, yeah. Over the last week and a half, it's gone from a quarter million to 60,000. Yeah. Um, and, like, you could say, oh, well, it's – the fucking thing is working. Like, yeah, sure. Quarantine's working. Yeah. Not working for the economy, though. No. Like, we it, – it's going to be super – hard to explain to a lot of people why our economy's fucked up for the next 10 years because of i don't know 30,000 deaths which is half of a bad flu season yeah and I, look you look at sweden um they did the opposite they just took the people that could be in danger and said mm-hmm. look you guys don't work we're gonna shut down you know that but everything else the economy is up and running and uh we're good to go and everything and they they have a very very low number there so i don't C- know cnn so at the same time this is this is how big a piece of shit Everyone who works for CNN is a giant piece of shit. Every yeah. single person over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Because if, you're, if you can stomach working for an organization like that, you have to be. Um, here's what they did. So they've been releasing these numbers daily, mm-hmm. and they can tell that it's against their narrative, and here's how I can tell. They bring up the black thing, right? Yeah. yeah. And then today they bring up uh, – Our last night an article got published that said something to the effect of coroners are worried they're not able to test dead bodies to get a true coronavirus count. Motherfucker, oh, are you kidding me? This is this here. is from the CDC's website. I'm reading this right now. So no one under one year old has died from this. Under 24, people 24 and younger, five people have died. Really? Total. Uh, 29 people between 25 and 34, 79 between 35 and 44. It doesn't hit triple digits until you get to 45. And 40% of the people 45 or older had pneumonia as well not just COVID-19 yeah a pre-existing uh, condition of, of some sort yeah. yeah so out of the <clears throat> out of the 916 cases that they tracked uh that were deaths I'm sorry that's not right yeah out of the 916 for 85 and over 437 so half okay were also had pneumonia not just any other pre-existing condition specifically pneumonia which pneumonia is tough for that age yeah. age group to, that's to a lot battle of, a lot of older people die of that yeah uh 75 to 84 914 deaths 421 of them also had pneumonia right like these people yeah. what, what this guy in england said when he revised his numbers mm-hmm. he said that most of these people about 60 percent or so were going to die by the end of the year anyways yeah so here we are. What the fuck are we doing? I know. And we got one guy on the show who's who's beaten E. coli, which is a really, <laughs> really rough disease to go through, you know? <laughs> Let's hope. Let's hope it's beat. We've I, got a we've got a real a, live E. coli survivor on the show. I had a real relapse yesterday at about midday. A relapse. <laughs> stomach went to shit. How do you have a, a relapse? I don't know, dude. It's just out of nowhere fucking Stomach went back to fucking horrible. I got, uh, you know, and just fucking incapacitated. Like I had to, by four o'clock, I just had to lay down and not move. How are the shits, dude? Because when you and I were talking, you said it was pretty much just just liquid every hour on the hour. Oh, dude, it's just, it's just water. Every, every hour. Yeah. You're just fucking pushing out water. There's no, there's no relief or anything like that. It's just, it comes on and you've got about, you know, 15 (laughs) seconds to make it to a bathroom you fucking throw it out and then you're done and it's like okay wait another hour but you have to that's the thing is you have to keep up i mean a lot of i i believe a a, a majority of of when e coli gets super dangerous is getting completely dehydrated and your kidneys failing and shutting down yeah so, so you're just drinking a lot like, of water you just have to stay on yeah yeah you got to stay on top of fucking tons of water you look thin so maybe look the e coli is doing do the I? body good yeah yeah you do very thin jared so you're, you're slimming you're right. down from it. Has it affected your sex life at all? <clears throat> well, I, I, you know, I couldn't move for quite a few days. So. Sure, but you know, somebody <laughs> could still come in I had to and put uh, that on pause. 
Ah, uh, no, you're not in the mood for that, dude. You're in fucking <laughs> excruciating pain. I always wondered. You yeah, know? for the first for the first time in my life, I didn't want it. <laughs> yeah, I, I always wondered if it's like, hey, is that part of the allure? Like, that's that's how far you're taking sex. It's like, you want to suck? You want to suck? You want to suck a guy off with a coli? Huh? No, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but oh, I, I, I enjoy how you've at least gone through your stages of porn and said, all right, great, man. Like, I'm not giving that up because I've been getting messages from you about the porn. And I'm like, Good I'm for just him. bored. You know, I mean, when mm. I was I was stuck in bed. So it's like, all right, fucking what else can I, you know, I can only watch so much video of 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 digital combat simulator competitions. <laughs> is, that, is that what you're watching? <laughs> yeah, I, I really like DCS and I got my. Uh, my simulator set back up so I can fly again. So I've just been watching a lot of a lot of people playing DCS to see the things that they're doing because now I'm in me and Party Ben uh, can jump on the headset and fly missions together. So it's really fun. That's awesome. I know Party Ben's got one. I'm surprised you don't have one. Yeah, I do have one. Oh, yeah, you, you just do? got one. Yeah. Shit. It's where a, is it? Yeah, I just it's right there. Dude, I was at your house a couple weeks ago. I didn't <laughs> see that fucking thing. Yeah, it wasn't set up. I have it set back up now that hey, I have my big studio. Hey, that's fucking awesome, dude. Uh, Party Ben, is he still with his lady? How's that working out? Yeah. Good for him. engaged. Fuck. Wait, I think what? he wants to come on the show this week. We'd love to have him back. The He's last time, one with me. What, the last time he got hit by a, a, a truck, right? Oh, that was yeah. three years ago. Shit. Yeah, I think that it was, was the last time. Years he, ago, yeah, yeah, that was the last time he was on the show, though, I believe. He almost died. Yeah. Yeah, we did a uh, Pray yes, for Bar- Party Ben show, I believe, in 40, his honor. Yep. 44%. Yeah, 44%. 44% of people 55 and older who have died of coronavirus had pneumonia as well. Ah, that's a lot. It's wow. a lot. <laughs> oh, uh, now's the did point they have sh- the pneumonia first? Uh, that's a good question. I doubt it. Or was are, it? Are, or did the virus just stem to pneumonia and then their lungs shut down? Pneumonia is a, it's a, it's a viral infection, though, so it would be separate like it wouldn't i don't know if, i don't I'm, I'm sure you become more susceptible as your immune system's weaker yes but okay. who knows which comes right. first? what do you got russ uh drinking bro of the week um this one is submitted by joseph sancio from new jersey um he's been a member of drinking bros since episode one he's nominating lewis sancio jr uh, first of all, guys, I love the show and everything you do. I've listened to the show since day one, and it's got me through some tough times. Now is one of those times. My uncle, uh, Louis Sanzio Jr., U.S. Army veteran, recently passed away from COVID-19, actually, uh, oh, at the wow. age of 78. Um, and that is in the, the numbers we were talking about. If you're there. 78 and you fucking get a hangnail, you're probably going to die. Yeah. Unfortunately. It's, it, it's, it, sucks. it sucks, man. It's the way life uh, he, like my father and aunt, <laughs> was one of the hardest working people I know. And had a heart of gold. Up until his last days, he still worked every day in a casino in Pennsylvania, mostly to fuel his passion, which was classic cars. Uh, My uncle's love of cars was unmatched over the course of 20 years. He won dozens of shows, most recently with his 1969 Oldsmobile 442. Uh, Some of my fondest memories were listening to him and my dad tell stories from their younger days and how shitty their cars were coming up. One of their cars had broken down and they decided to abandon it instead of tow it or push it because it was just cheaper to leave it. The hardest part right now is not being able to say goodbye to him in person, but also watching my father not have one last chance with his brother. It would mean a lot to my uncle to be the drinking bro of the week. Louis Sancio Jr., or Louis, if I'm pronouncing that incorrectly, was uh, down to earth as they come. Uh, from the army to being a butcher to classic car connoisseur, oh, he was butcher. always down for a drink and a bullshit about cars and life. Uh, Sounds fun. Yeah, man. Um, cheers. 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 And again, it's 78 for uh, for coronavirus. Unfortunately, that is the age range. And that's that's mm. the bitch of the coronavirus itself is like, you know, <clears throat> you can narrow it down. And uh, according to the numbers that you read off earlier, Dan, two yeah. ages. And if you're in that age range, you're likely to, you know, get it or easily contract it. And that's the shitty part yeah. about this. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, fuck, it, it, it's it's a tough one um, for people under 45. There's been like 110 deaths. Yeah. For people under 55, there's been like 300. And I think me personally, if the media would have reported that and, and done like Sweden did of like, hey, man. 
Yeah. You're in this age range. Do not go out of your fucking house. Um, it would yeah. have helped more people. Well, but- you saw you saw CNN and various other uh, uh, news agencies report like, oh, there's some doubt on the age thing. Like somebody like they they would make it a headline. Yes. Yeah. That said, oh, like, how do you stretch out? Five headlines from one piece of information. Yeah, yeah, but, but they you, make it. A, they make it a headline and say, "Fucking twelve-year-old died from coronavirus." Like, yeah, there's going to be one. Yeah, but there's literally been four. But if you would have narrowed it down to the age range of of what Joseph was talking about and his uncle here, right? If you would have narrowed it down at, at the at the beginning mm-hmm. of this, or or fuck, second or third week yeah. in, and said, mm-hmm. "Hey guys, here's where it is most sixteen serious. up." You, yeah, home. you cannot yeah. leave your fucking house at all. Yeah, if you work at a uh, retirement community or in a hospital, you're quarantined. Like, you can only go to and from work. Yes. Stuff yeah. like that. Like, this would have been over already. Yeah, and, and, you know, by stretching it out and saying everybody's got to do this and X, it's, man, that's so many people, and you're not really narrowing it down to who's most at risk. The, the only time I heard genuine numbers throughout this entire process wasn't from any fucking news or organization at all. It was my, my local shitty basic wilmington news that had the 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 actual numbers and once i it was broken down like that i was like fuck why aren't they telling that age range not to go out of the house like, i don't know i don't know but yeah. luckily there's uh a Good couple question. of things a couple of things are happening one uh the the malaria drug scene like i've heard actually some drinking bros have posted that work in that are nurses and shit have posted that they've been using it at their hospitals and that's been working pretty well yeah. Uh, the other part is that there's an antibody test coming soon. There's already been about 200,000 pushed out. Um, and the antibody test will tell you if you've already had it or if you're resistant to it. One of the two things, in which case you can just go back to work. That's not only yeah. can you not yeah. get it, but you can't be a carrier because it's, it's a virus that lives in the back yeah. of your throat and it sheds over time. Right. So you wouldn't be able to carry it either if you're not a carrier, if you're, not, if you're resistant to it. Mm-hmm. So those people can go back to work and go and do whatever the fuck they want with impunity. Still wash your hands so you don't yeah, infect somebody else, absolutely. but you're not going to get coronavirus. That's That should have been the priority. As soon as any quarantine was announced, how do we get the false positives out of the way? Like, how do we get the people who aren't at risk back to work immediately? Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, that's not how mm-hmm. it's worked so far. Yeah, uh, but 78, that's a long <laughs> life. I, I don't think that I will get there, but... Um, <sighs> oof, no, uh, you, you may not make it out of this room today. No, no, not a, not a prayer. <laughs> Uh, Jared, great having you back, buddy. I'm glad you're feeling better, and uh, we love you, buddy. Um, hashtag all the prayers for Jared. One like I equals one guys. prayer. It worked. <laughs> Jared is back with us, and uh, he'll, he'll be back. back back on the show. Uh, for Jared Taylor, Danton and Danton Holloway, I'm Ron Patterson. This is The Drinking Bros. Good night, everyone.